Amazing championship battles in motorsports are usually never forgotten, but in the case of this season, this is one that tends to get forgotten amongst NASCAR's fan base. While the 2003 season gave us a lot of memorable moments, which included Matt Kenseth's one-win championship season, as well as the Jimmy Smith vs. Brendan Gaughan fiasco in the Truck Series season finale at Homestead, without a doubt, the best championship battle all season took place in the NASCAR Busch Series, where we had not just one, not just two, but six drivers contending for the championship at season's end. This is NASCAR's most forgotten championship battle. We're going to start this recap with nine races to go. While the championship battle was intense all season, this is where, in my opinion, it gets absolutely insane. Scott Riggs and David Green had swapped the points lead throughout most of the season, but now all of a sudden Brian Vickers has found an uptick in performance, while Jason Keller and Ron Hornaday are on a bit of a downswing at this point. And at this point as well, Bobby Hamilton Jr. is nowhere in contention to compete for the 2003 title. For this race at Richmond, the top three in points are starting inside the top five. But on one early restart, one championship contender would get right into another, beginning a chaotic finish towards the Bush Series title. Oh, oh Riggs in the wall. Did Riggs he get squeezed hard. into it? Yeah. yeah championship leaders got big damage. He may have a left front tire down, but he's got, he's got the left front fender pushed in. The right side's all caved in. Got some trouble on the left front, that's for sure. Ron Hornaday completely shoved Scott Riggs into the wall, and the Nesquik 10 team was forced to be in recovery mode the entire evening. They salvaged what they could of the evening with all that damage, but eventually it ended up paying off towards the end of the race. Scott Riggs was able to get his points lead back out it be just by one point, but unfortunately it would be all for naught because later on in the race they ran into some more problems. Here's Riggs, he's losing all those spots to those cars on the inside. Watch the sparks when he goes into one. Yeah, something, that's something breaking, I would think, I mean. It could be the tire going down and just not seeing it flat yet, but his crew has already called him on the radio called for two right side tires and he's trying to get down pit lane but he's got all these cars coming and Mike Bliss Poor Mike Bliss nowhere to go ends up on top of him that was Jay Sauter that caught a piece of Bliss going by Scott Riggs would definitely take a dip in the point standings but he wouldn't be the only one Shane Mill thought this racing move was completely okay and completely took out one of the championship contenders in Jason Keller. David Green walked away from this race with the series points lead while Scott Riggs gave us one of the greatest post-race rants of all time. Well, I mean, the first thing I got to do, I got to thank Ron Hornaday for continuing to prove that he is the most disrespectful driver on the racetrack. And uh, that's where it all started. We had a good race car. Uh, you got somebody like him who thinks, you know, somehow somebody put him as the king of restarts, so suddenly he's got to do something spectacular uh, on every restart. So his spectacular thing on that restart was to just run the 10 car up in the wall. So uh, great job by him by proving how disrespectful he is and what a true coward of a driver he is and doesn't know how to race anybody clean and really know how to drive a race car. And uh, after that, you know, it was just down here for us. Safe to say Scott Riggs entering the next race at Dover was pretty fired up to get some of those lost points back. But what he ended up doing would make that funny rant interview not age well at all. Here's Scott Riggs with a little pressure on David. Oh, did he tap him? And behind him, David Strummy spins. David Green, the championship leader, is into the wall and hit again by his brother Jeff. Off the hard to get anything going this minute. He took you out. He slammed you in the back and turned you around. That is the championship leader's car, David Green. The car that bumped him is the man who is third in points, Scott Riggs. I guess the way it all takes out right here, that they're just going to wreck everybody and see who wins at the final deal. But uh, some people you can race with, I thought I could with Scott. Just one move puts David Green all the way from first back down to fourth. He eventually got back on the track. Again, this was in an era before we had the famous caution clock. David Green would bag only a few points, but not too many. Meanwhile, the worst case scenario happened for him. Both Scott Riggs and Brian Vickers duked it out for the lead throughout the race. While Vickers ended up running away for the victory, Scott Riggs wasn't too far behind, and out of nowhere, Bobby Hamilton Jr. began to show even more consistency, scoring his second straight top five. And it doesn't look like Hamilton Jr. can do anything no with pressure. Vickers. No pressure. 
Baron of 2003, Brian Vickers. A few weeks ago, the five was as low as fifth in the standings. Now, all of a sudden, they're the Bush Series points leader. Ron Hornaday and Jason Keller both scored top tens as well, but for David Green, the following race at Kansas needed to be perfect. While Green, Keller, and Riggs at the very least ran inside the top 10, Hornaday and Vickers would end up running into problems of their own. Mm, loose. There's not a lot of grip up in that outside lane for the two car of Hornaday. I don't think there's a lot of damage to the two. Do you, Jimmy? No, I don't. He may have just touched it. Um... I mean, it looks like the car settled into the track loose and he chased it obviously to the top. Oh. Trouble, the car in the wall, two of them in the wall. Jason Leffler and Brian Vickers, the championship leader. Oh man. And Vickers car is not going uh, back on the racetrack today. I don't know nope. what happened. I don't know if somebody got into me. I... There he is on the outside and it just goes in the corner and a lot of dirty air and, the, in there. and Leffler just kind of spun to avoid he backed off the throttle quickly which spun the double zero out for the third race in a row the points leader would end up running into some problems it was like nobody wanted to win this championship scott riggs car faded towards the end but david green stayed strong throughout and for the third week in a row bobby hamilton jr had a chance to score his third straight top five only this time he had a legit shot at winning. The most dominant car all day in the Aaron's Dream Machine 99 of Michael Waltrip had a cut tire and ended up pounding the wall, setting us up for a one lap shootout. Hamilton Jr., David Green, Greg Biffle, Kevin Harvick, Jason Keller, the top five. One lap to go at Kansas. Green to the inside. Oh, oh, oh. Hamilton Jr.'s in trouble. Into the wall in turn one. Oh, no. He either missed a shift or ran out of gas. They have not called for the caution. So they'll race back to the finish line because of where Hamilton Jr.'s car is. They're going to let him race back to the stripe. David Green is going to pick up the win. It is, from what I understand, the rule is not supposed to happen that way. I'll be very interested to see how this plays out. Third win of 2003 for David Green. From zero to hero in a week's time, David Green's 37 Wolf Pontiac took the victory at Kansas. And it's also interesting to point out that even though he was driving a Pontiac, he really didn't have any sort of manufacturer alliance. He was either aligned with Bill Davis Racing or DEI throughout the season. As for the points battle, David Green was yet again back on top. Meanwhile, Brian Vickers went from hero to zero in just a week's time. But just like David Green, Redemption would also follow Brian Vickers heading into the next race at Charlotte. We told you the NASCAR Bush Series Championship was going to be a major story today. As of now in the race, Vickers would take second place away from Riggs. And actually... The top five will spread out a little bit because Jason Keller's struggling some right now. Out of all the championship contenders, it seemed like in this race, Brian Vickers was the only one to really show up. He was the only one out of them all to run inside the top five consistently throughout the race, as well as leading multiple laps outside of a few. Greg Biffle ended up taking the victory, and yes, he really did drive that seven car. And even though Vickers had the superior day amongst the five, he wasn't able to do enough to get the points lead as David Green just finished inside the top 10 to have the edge. With five races left, the championship battle was getting more and more intense. Based on the trends, if you see what I did there, you'd expect the points leader to run into some problems once again, right? Welp, that's exactly what happened. David Green ran well outside the top 10, and throughout the day, the points battle between them was so intense that Vickers was as far as one point back of the points lead. The battle for third was just as intense with Keller, Horner Day, and Riggs swapping third spot. Unfortunately for David Green, a mediocre day ended up being compounded to an even worse one. Alan, you remember when I talked about the fact that David Green somehow, someway cannot hold on to this point lead more than two races. His crew chief is Jason Radcliffe. Jason, I heard David just mention over the radio, maybe something wrong with the engine. What's going on? Well, it looks like maybe we dropped a, dropped the cylinder. Very fortunate all year to not have any motor problems. And, uh, so this looks like, uh, you know, our, our one of the year, hopefully. Our only one of the year, hopefully. But uh, we'll just try to finish it out right here and do the best we can. While Brian Vickers led a race high on 152 laps, his car faded towards the end. 
leaving Bobby Hamilton Jr., the last of the top six in points, to battle for the victory with Johnny Sauter in the closing laps of the race. Three laps to go. Up the track a little bit for Sauter. Hamilton Jr. with the wiggle. Can he get alongside? Just enough, just to get in the back of the car, just enough to get the 21 car up the racetrack. Sauter drives it in deep, trying to stay alongside. To the start-finish line, Hamilton Jr. by a fender. They got the to the line, Bobby Hamilton. Thanks, Harold Holly. Marines are going to victory lane here in Memphis. Bobby Hamilton Jr. wins the Samstown 250 with a dramatic late pass on Johnny Sauter for his third win of the season. While Bobby Hamilton Jr. still had some catching up to do, top five finishes from Jason Keller and Ron Hornaday had them closer to the points lead more than ever before. Vickers was able to salvage a fifth place finish, which got him the points lead, but finishes outside the top 10 for David Green and Scott Riggs had them losing some traction. Atlanta would serve as another chaotic race in the championship, Early contact with both Casey Mears and Martin Truex Jr. resulted in some damage early on in the race for Brian Vickers. Another case of the series points leader running into issues. They did whatever they could to try and rectify the aerodynamic issues early in the going, but found out the hard way it was a lost cause. We're back in caution town in the Aaron's 312. Brian Vickers has just looped around off turn two, didn't hit anything, and grabbed a gear and kept going, but the yellow flag's out again. That's an ill feeling he's having right now. Mm. He's traveling. He drove through it, didn't he? <laughs> I think the slide, the spin is probably what caused the left front tire to go yeah, flat. Might have. Vickers was as high as 14 laps down and ended up finishing 31st. This took him in a complete nosedive from first all the way to fifth in the standings. That's how close we are. David Green and Scott Riggs finished just inside the top 10 while Jason Keller and Ron Hornaday had mediocre days. But once again, for the second consecutive week, Bobby Hamilton Jr. is right up there with another top five finish. David Green is once again the new points leader, and for the first time in what's felt like a while, Scott Riggs is back inside the top two. Jason Keller and Ron Hornaday are tied up for third, and Brian Vickers took an obvious nosedive, but the following race at Phoenix with just three races left in the championship showed us that Bobby Hamilton Jr. could potentially be that sixth championship contender. While Hamilton and Harvick kept swapping the lead, the other five contenders don't have a race winning car. While some at the very least have a top 10 car, once again, our points leader would run into some trouble. Well, until the race is over, Matt, David Green's your championship leader probably will not be by the end of the day. Currently in 20th, as you see, it has been an absolute struggle day for those guys still loose in, tight in the middle, loose off last time they did air pressure wedge and track bar, and it hasn't helped yet. They are still struggling with the 37 car right now, Alan. It's a lot of work to have it not get any better. And uh, championship standings as they run. Scott Riggs started today second. At this point, he would take over the championship lead. David Green would fall from first to fourth. And once again, we see the points leader take a complete nosedive. Scott Riggs, Ron Hornaday, and Brian Vickers end up taking advantage with solid runs but none maximized their points more than Bobby Hamilton Jr. The race was shortened 11 laps by rain, and not only does Bobby Hamilton Jr. score his fourth win of 2003, but for the first time in a long time, he is finally in contention to run for the championship. Look at this picture. And look at the guy in sixth. Yeah, Hamilton Jr.'s moved up just 125 back. Hey, it's not out of the realm of possibilities the way this thing has gone as well. The point lead has changed hands now after six of the last seven races, and there are two to go. Man. Can't wait. This is what race is all about. It doesn't get much better than this. Two races to go. Six drivers all in contention for one championship. Unfortunately, five guys 
are gonna come up just a little bit short and win us over. The guy holding the championship trophy is gonna be me. Me, 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 me. Two races to go, six championship contenders. While Scott Riggs enters this race as the points leader, Brian Vickers' pole run and David Green running inside the top five early on show that at the end of the day, that might not be the case. Championship contenders, Green in third, Vickers in fourth. Let's see, farther down, Hamilton Jr.'s in 10th, Riggs is in 12th, and Hornaday in 19th. And of course, Jason Keller had to start at the back of the field, and he has moved up to 26th starting spot as Vickers and Green race side by side for third. As they run. Yeah. Oh man, Vickers would have a one point lead, but now he has a six point lead because he just passed him for position. The points battle is once again so close that David Green and Scott Riggs at one point were tied during the race. Vickers was clearly the best car amongst the top three, but he wasn't competing for the victory despite starting on pole. All Scott Riggs really had to do was just maintain his top 10 running position and he could potentially walk away out of Rockingham with not just the points lead, but with the slightest of cushions entering Homestead. But of course, like I said earlier, based on the trends, he enters this race as the series points leader, which means in the 2003 Bush Series season, he was bound to run into some problems. It's just happened again. Scott Riggs into the wall at Rockingham. Caution flag is out with 32 laps to go. And these guys just did it. And he has some serious damage to this car. Oh, this would be a good look at he it. He goes high. Oh, he just ran up on the back of the zero. And with those fresh tires, the closure rate was so fast. Yeah. He just closed in so fast. He had to avoid missed the hit in the double zero. The wall was there. It happened to the points leader again. And you already know what that means. A huge nosedive in the point standings ensued, falling all the way from first to fifth in the closing laps of the race. Bobby Hamilton Jr. was the only one amongst the championship contenders to finish inside the top five, while Brian Vickers and David Green finished inside the top 10. This would set up a 1992 Hooters 500 championship scenario. Six drivers in contention for a championship with one race to go, at a track that has similar configurations to Atlanta Motor Speedway's old one. This would be the first race for the NASCAR Busch Series on the newly configurated Homestead Miami Speedway. Brian Vickers enters this race as the points leader with the other five contenders not too far back. Alan, Brian Vickers at just 20 years old has a chance to become the youngest NASCAR Busch Series champion ever. His team told me this morning we're trying to do everything just the way we always do. Same procedures, change nothing and those procedures have led to three wins already this year. Matt Yoakum. Dave 1994 series champion David Green is chasing some history. He's only five drivers have won two titles in Bush Series competition. David trying to make it number six in a race car that was first at Kansas. He's second in points 12th on the grid to Bill Weber. Ron Hornaday won two championships in the truck series this morning. He told me that it would be awesome at the age of 45 to win this championship. He said last year was a learning experience. This year he hopes to capitalize on it. Final words from Hornaday. We did not come here to finish second. Matt. Jason Keller knows it has to be a mistake free day. He's fourth in the standings 17 times this season. The points that has changed. David Green is hoping to make it number 18 and be the 18th series champion today. Matt, last week Scott Riggs fell from first to fifth in the championship after failing to finish a race for the first time in 2003. Scott said, I was devastated after last week, but it strengthened my resolve to win today's race and the outright championship. Marty Snyder. Dave, our sixth and final player, Bobby Hamilton Jr., who just two months ago was 369 points out of the lead, now just 89 from his first ever Bush Series championship. His biggest advantage, he's got nothing to lose. No one expected him to be here. All they care about is winning the race. And after all, if they win the race, they earn the maximum amount of points. And we've already seen something that you would not have seen last year. Kevin Harvick took the 21 Oh, car. trouble, turn three. Got a car turned around into the wall. Scott Riggs. It's one of the championship contenders, Riggs. Oh, and he gets hit again and again. Stop, Jimmy, when you get a chance, Scott. Stop, Jimmy. Title bid over. I'm okay. I'm okay. 
We didn't even get a single lap in, and already one of the championship contenders' day is over. Scott Riggs' day was completely wiped out by future NASCAR bus John Wood. At Rockingham, just a week ago, he entered that race as the points leader with two races left. Now, all of a sudden, he's out of the running for the championship and will have to unfortunately settle for a bitter sixth place finish. And early on, he nearly wasn't the only one to run into problems. You went by the right rear plan. Matty? You heard him say on the radio, I think I have a right rear flat. David Green trying for a second series title. The guys are getting the tires ready, so when he does hit pit road, they can try to service that car as quickly as possible. This could be possible heartbreak for David Green. <laughs> man, oh man. That's horrible. Got a flat here, I don't know. See, the thing of it is, he doesn't know it's flat because you run such a big right rear spring here at this Ooh, racetrack. But on. I would say he's a bit on the flat side. Oh, he's clear now. Come on down. All right, come on. Yeah, look at it. It's off. It's down. Right rear. Isn't it? Yes, it's down. It's flat. Yeah. David Green's early issues force him out of the running early in the going, but Bobby Hamilton Jr. could pull off the Cinderella story. At one point, he's not only leading the race, but he's the only championship contender inside the top 10. But it certainly wouldn't be the end of all the points chaos, because after a caution came out during Green Flag pit stops, Ron Hornaday just happened to be out in front and all of a sudden, he was the points leader. Most of the contenders saw problems throughout the day. It was really only Bobby Hamilton Jr. who had probably the most solid day of them all. David Green and Brian Vickers had their issues they had to sort out, and Ron Hornaday and Jason Keller were pretty much mediocre all day. Even towards the end of the race, most of them weren't running inside the top 10. Eventually, David Green would find his way inside the top 10 in the final laps of the race, becoming the second driver to do so of the contenders but it wouldn't be enough. Brian Vickers was able to hang just in there running outside of the top 10 and win the 2003 championship by the slimmest of margins. Off of turn number four, David Green is going to finish ninth. It's not going to be enough. And the 2003 NASCAR Busch Series champion is Brian Vickers driving for Hendrick Motorsports. Congratulations, Brian. Fantastic job, boys. What an epic struggle this was today for all of these teams. NASCAR Busch Series champions. The final points tally for the 2003 Busch Series season saw Brian Vickers edge out David Green by 14 points. Ron Hornerday snags third, minus 46 back. Bobby Hamilton Jr. ends up finishing fourth, minus 49 back. And also keep in mind, he was over 300 points behind the leader at one point while Jason Keller and Scott Riggs finish over 100 points behind in 5th and 6th. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the 2003 NASCAR season offered us a lot of memorable moments. But as far as the championship battle was concerned, none of them were as good as the one NASCAR fans saw in the 2003 Busch Series. The reason this championship battle gets lost in history is because a lot of the contenders really peaked after this season. Hopefully now, this championship battle will be remembered by a lot more NASCAR fans. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.